So we've already got a fruit developing on this plant and we'll use this one as an example since it looks a little bit better. What's up Lazy Dog fam? I hope all y'all are having a fantastic day. It is Wednesday, May 31st here in South Georgia. And on today's video, I'm gonna give you an update on some things going on here on the back half of the property. And these two plots, we're gonna talk a little bit about our giant pumpkin and giant butternut squash growing strategies. But first, I wanted to give you a little sneak peek at what might be coming on a video later this week with some sweet corn harvesting and some sweet corn processing. So as you can see here, many of the ears on our Eden sweet corn have silks that have turned nice and brown, getting crispy. And I don't know if y'all can tell, but I can tell those ears are starting to plump up quite a bit. So I've already had a few ears raw and Titus has already had a few ears raw. Me and him are the official corn taste testers around here. Open one of these up for you so you can see here. No worms on that one. Have had a few worms on a couple of the ears. We'll talk about that when we do the full video talking about this corn processing and all that. But just wanted to show you how pretty those ears are for this white Eden sweet corn variety there. Nice and filled out, nice and plumped up. Really good crunch to it and also really good sweet flavor. So hopefully on the next video or maybe the one after that, we'll talk more about this Eden super sweet corn here and while we like this variety, we'll talk about when to harvest sweet corn, how to manage worm damage on sweet corn, and kind of the window you might have as far as when you need to go ahead and get it picked and processed. All right, so now let's see what's going on on the back half of the property here. We'll start out with these giant sunflowers that didn't get very giant. So these sunflowers on our arch panel trellis here are pretty, or they were pretty, a week or so ago. Some of them are starting to fade now. Most of them only got about four foot tall or so. We've got a couple good candidates there as far as giant sunflowers go that are continuing to grow. But most of these are relatively short, and I think I know why. So I was talking to Ryan over at Heavenly Hills Homestead. He's the one who sent us these giant sunflower seeds. And he said he always direct seeds his. And I was talking about transplanting mine. And I think what happened was I grew them out in the seed trays and then they got too tall and leggy and it maybe kind of stunted the growth on them because he said he's never had this issue, but he always direct seeds his. So I think I need to just plant me another round here on this arch panel trellis and direct seed those. I also have some giant gourd seeds from him that I think I'm gonna plant here as well. So maybe a combination of giant sunflowers and giant gourds. We're gonna try again for a big sunflower direct seeding this time. Now in addition to those sunflowers that we need to try again on, we've got lots of flowers right here as well, kind of finishing out this row. We've got some marigolds down there on the end and then a lot of zinnias coming back this way. A lot of different colors in here several of the queenie series from johnny's and got some white zinnias in here as well now you couldn't see many blooms on those zinnias because i just pruned them back yesterday so a couple things kind of picked up on growing zinnias this year we've been growing zinnias a long time but a couple things this year that i found that improved things for me one I need to feed them. In the past, we just plant some zinnias somewhere, let them do their thing, don't really take care of them, don't really fertilize them. But I've found that fertilizing them greens them up a little bit, seems to make them be a little bit more productive as far as the flower production. And also, so far, it's helped them kind of push through any early mildew they might develop. We do get mildew on zinnias pretty bad down here. So I'm just trying to keep everything nice and fertile and healthy and hopefully resist the mildew for as long as I can. I've also been aggressively pruning the zinnias. That seems to help to keep the plants to be more bushy, not get tall and kind of fall over if we get some heavy winds. So for these here that are nice and green, I side dressed these with some more Nature Safe 855 a couple weeks ago. They've responded to it pretty well. And I've also been keeping them pruned back pretty hard. So once I get a bloom that opens up, I'll cut it back all the way down to where it starts to branch off there. 
and that's keeping things nice and bushy. We don't have to worry about trellising these things or worry about them falling over. Now the other thing we've got going on right here on this side of the plot before we get to all the pumpkin fun over there would be these Georgia Jet sweet taters here which have started to grow pretty well, started to take off. Our mound probably needs a little bit of work there, probably need a little weed suppression in there as well. So we'll probably come in here and rake up that mound, make it a little taller in the next few days. But good to see some nice growth on those so far. All right, now let's talk about some giant butternut squash or Seminole pumpkin and some giant pumpkin. And just as a reminder, we are having a little friendly competition with these giant butternut squash seeds that we have on our website. If you purchase some of those from us, be sure to tag us on social media, whether that be Facebook or Instagram. Tag us in pictures as your giant butternut squash grow. And whoever grows the largest one is going to get a free big jug of AgriThrive fertilizer. Now you don't have to grow these giant butternut like I'm growing here if you just want some solid food production, but we're trying to grow a monster here. So we're growing them a specific way. So we have a line of drip tape right down kind of the center of where these two plants sit. This row is about 40 foot long. We only have two plants in here. So we have this plant and then we have that plant down there. So we've already got a fruit developing on this plant and we'll use this one as an example since it looks a little bit better. So we have our primary vine right here that we're trying to keep running along where this drip tape sits because as this vine grows it will put down roots and we want that drip tape line there to be able to feed what will eventually be a pretty massive butternut squash plant. So what we've been doing here is just training this primary vine to run along that ridge there where our buried drip tape sits. And every few feet or so, what we do is we come in here, kind of throw some soil on top of that vine. That'll help it root down, but it'll also hold it in place. Now off that primary vine or that main trunk there, we get these secondary vines that I've kind of trained to run out this way. Now we do want to trim off the tertiary vines that will form eventually. But we want to keep these secondary vines and we want to kind of train them so that they grow outwards and everything doesn't get too tangled on us. Now according to the giant pumpkin growing experts out there, you want to train your vines to end up looking kind of like a Christmas tree. So the first secondary vines will be the longest ones and then as you go up the trunk the secondary vines are shorter and shorter so it forms kind of like a triangle or looks kind of like a Christmas tree. Mine isn't going to quite look like a Christmas tree, mine's going to more look like a spade or a fish and I'll show you what I mean. So instead of letting this secondary vine here kind of just run perpendicular to the main vine, I'm going to kind of tail it back here a little bit. I left some room back here. I didn't plant this pumpkin plant right at the beginning of the plot. Left some room back there so I can do this. So I'm going to kind of whip it back this way. Then with our other secondary vines, we can kind of curve those back around this way as well. That's going to give us a little more room as opposed to just letting them go straight out that way. So we'll kind of turn them back this way a little bit. And then as we do, we'll just throw some dirt on them to kind of hold them in place. So for this giant butternut plant here, we're going to do a lot of vine training. We're going to do some pretty aggressive pruning. We'll probably only leave one fruit on the plant just to see how big that one will get. Now for that plant up there, I might have a different game plan. I might just let that one grow and see how many fruits it makes. For this plant right here, I'm going to try and go for a monster. So the other thing we'll be doing here in addition to training and pruning is making sure this baby is very well fed. So we put down some Nature Safe 855 and a pretty good sized ring when we planted this transplant. I then put some Nature Safe 1300 all the way down the row where the drip tape was. That way that trunk line could kind of access it. And then as the secondary vines are kind of branching out, I've been feeding those as well with some side dressing and also pouring a little agrothrive alongside those as they root. So yeah, it takes a lot more work or time to grow a pumpkin or a butternut squash like that, but it's been pretty fun coming out here and kind of training the vines and really kind of watching how the plant grows 
understanding that part of it and understanding what you need to do to grow a monster so we're having fun with it so far now let me show you our food pumpkins so even though we can eat those giant butternut squash that would be grown over there our main food source on this back half of the property is going to be these Seminole pumpkins here and these things are looking really really nice I have trained the vines on these a little bit the main or primary vine they're all kind of going out that way I'm saving that spot there to plant a good bit of turmeric here in the next week or two so I did come in here and kind of point all the main vines that way not straight out not straight up just kind of at a 45 degree angle there that way they wasn't taking up so much of this space over here that we're going to use for turmeric so our plants here looking healthy and much like the butternut which is the same species as the Seminole pumpkin here you get that kind of white variegation on the leaves if you see that and you're growing Seminole or butternut don't worry about it it's not a disease it's just what their leaves are supposed to look like and behind that plot we've got two more pumpkin plants growing these are our atlantic giant pumpkins grew 160 pounder last year hoping for a 500 pounder this year now with these atlantic giant pumpkins kind of the same strategy as we're doing with those giant butternut squash now these plants haven't really started putting out some long secondary vines yet so we haven't had to do a whole lot of training thus far besides just running that primary vine down this line where this drip tape is you can see i've got the drip tape on now it's watering that main lane there where we put some fertilizer down we're just trying to run that main trunk there along that line you can see these leaves right here got a little bit burnt i think i gave them too heavy a dose of agrothrive the other day but they should make it through it okay i just kind of learned my boundaries there as far as how much i can push these plants didn't really hurt that one down there but i did hurt this one here a little bit now besides shooting the juice to these and making sure they've got plenty of water the only real maintenance we've had to do so far with these giant pumpkins is just running this primary vine along this ridge where we have the drip tape and we have some fertilizer down there so at each of these nodes here it will try to put down some little roots and we want it to root down there so we just kind of run it along the ridge and cover it with some soil every few feet or so that keeps it where we want it it will try to veer left or right on us a little bit we just have to keep kind of straightening it up covering it up with soil and it's on the right track so i've heard some giant pumpkin growers say that you need to give each plant a thousand square foot of space which sounds like a lot now this plot here is about i don't know 20 by 35 so about only 600 700 square foot maybe and we've got two plants in here so we're definitely not giving each plant a thousand square foot of space but according to ryan over at heavenly hills homestead you really don't need a thousand square foot to grow a big one of course if you're trying to set world records you may want to give them that much space but he said you don't have to give them that much space you can still grow a nice one in a relatively tight space now if you're just wanting to grow an 80 or 100 pound pumpkin or so you don't have to do any of the things we just showed or talked about last year we grew a 160 pounder we didn't really prune the vines correctly we didn't really train the vines correctly we did prune off all the fruit except one on each plant which seemed to help a little bit but you can grow a decent sized one without even trying we're going for a 500 pounder so we're going to try a little harder this year so I hope you enjoyed the video today and we'll be sure to keep you updated with our giant pumpkin and giant butternut squash plants as they grow. Don't forget to share photos of yours with us on social media. Check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website lazydogfarm.com. If you want to see one of those giant pumpkins that we grew last year, that 160 pounder, check out this video right here. We'll show you kind of the strategies we were using last year and you can see how they differ from what we're doing this year. So check that out. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.